Move over, Hunter Node. Rainbird has a battery-operated valve controller solution that's a game changer. Adrian Sanchez here for Sprinkler Warehouse. Let's talk about the Rainbird ESP 9 volt. These babies come in one, two, four, and six station versions. In the model number, the number after the V indicates how many zones. For example, this is the ESP 9V6. It has six possible zones. What do you use it for? So glad you asked. This is a battery powered controller for your irrigation system that you can use to operate from one to six zones, depending on the model. Side note, you do have to have a DC latching solenoid on your valve to use a battery powered controller. If your valve doesn't have a DC latching solenoid, you can retrofit the valve with one. You'll need to purchase one that's made for your valve. You can plop this controller right in the valve box right next to the valve, even if your valve box is a muddy, flooded mess. You heard me right. This thing is good to go even underwater. It's a Haas. It comes with a holder slash connector thing that uh, supports it right on top of a Rainbird DC latching solenoid. This controller operates on either one or two alkaline 9 volt batteries. One battery should last a year, two should cover you for about two years. To install the batteries, unscrew the cap here, pull out the connectors, attach your batteries and slide them back in. This yellow wire here is for the rain sensor. To install a rain sensor, cut the wire. Remember to use waterproof wire nuts when wiring to your rain sensor. All right, I'm gonna pull off this rubber cover here. Look at that gigantic, easy to read display. I don't even need my bifocals. It also comes with this lovely manual in English, Spanish, and French. Commandes et indicateurs. Uh. So let's walk through programming this thing. Setting up the date. Press the mode button and the last two digits of the year will begin flashing. Plus or minus keys will get you to the correct year. Press the arrow button to go to the month. The number one is flashing. Plus or minus keys to get you to the month. Once again, arrow key to get you to the day of the month. If you oopsed anywhere along the way, the arrow key will keep going around the year, month, and date so you can change whatever you need. If you did it correctly, there's an arrow at the top of the screen pointing to the day of the week printed on the label surrounding the screen. Hit the mode button again and then let's set the time. Plus or minus buttons for the hour. Do note the little tiny AM or PM flashing here beside the minutes. You select AM or PM by scrolling through the hours. Arrow button to begin setting minutes. And once you've got that set mode button again. A cool feature here that the Rainbird has is the contractor rapid programming. Once you've got zone one program, that program is automatically copied to the rest of the zones and they will each start in sequence. Changes made to a zone afterwards will only affect that zone, however. A big number one on the left side of the screen indicates we are programming zone number one. The plus and minus keys will change which zone you're working with. On the right side of the screen, you'll see two start times. There are four available start times for each zone. Press the arrow key to begin setting the first start time. Then use the plus or minus keys to advance or regress the time by 10 minutes each press. To program the next start time, for zone one, press the arrow key. After you program each start time, the arrow key will advance to the next start time. If you want to program the start time of each zone individually, keep pressing the arrow button until the big one on the left starts blinking again. Then press the plus button to advance to the next zone. However, if you want each zone to start in sequence, which is a pretty standard way of operating, you can skip ahead to the next step. Each zone will have the same start time listed in the program, but will fire off in sequence. Let's press the mode button again to begin setting days of the week. The large number one is flashing for zone one. There's also a little calendar symbol up at the top to let us know we're in the days of the week program. The little up arrow or triangle underneath each day of the week shows whether that day is set to water or not. Right now, the arrow under Monday is flashing, letting you know that you're ready to decide whether or not to water on Monday. Pressing the plus will set Monday to water and advance you to Tuesday. Pressing the minus button will set Monday not to water and advance you to Tuesday. Plus is for yes, minus is for no. If I wanted to water Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, I'd press minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. Now there's arrows under Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. 
If you make a noops, just keep pressing the arrow key and you can swing around the days of the week as many times as you need to get the schedule just right. Also, you don't have to use the custom watering days. There are other hidden programs here too. Press the plus and minus keys at the same time and you'll see the words cycle every and a small two under it. You can have this timer water every so many days from one to 30 or press the plus and minus keys at the same time again to water all of the odd calendar days or press the plus and minus keys at the same time again to water all the even calendar days. It is pretty awesome, however, to be able to set different days for different zones. You may, for example, have a zone that contains plants that need to be watered more or less often than, say, your lawn. Press the mode key again, and we'll be ready to set how long we're watering for. Once again, the one is flashing, thus indicating we're working on zone one. And there's an hourglass shape indicating we're setting how long we're going to water for. The watering time is in minutes. Press the mode button so that the time is flashing. Plus and minus to set how long. 240 minutes is the max time. Hit mode button again, and you'll be at what they call the seasonal adjust program which means you can reduce or increase the amount of watering time by a percentage. Adjusting the percentage will adjust the watering times of all zones at once. Press the mode button again and you'll be in the auto run section. You're all programmed and ready to go. There's a button with a picture of a sprinkler head and a stop sign. Press it once and you'll be in the manual watering screen. Press the plus or minus buttons to pick which zone you wish to water. You can also select all. Press the arrow key to set how many minutes you wish to water. You can also press the minus button until you see SCH for schedule. That will water each zone for its normal watering time. Press the arrow key to begin the manual watering cycle. You can also use the off slash manual watering button to stop any current watering going on. Or from the auto run screen, press the off button twice to stop any scheduled watering indefinitely. And to delay your watering schedule for a set number of days, press and hold the plus button for about three seconds until the screen changes. You'll see a sprinkler head with an X through it. The big number on the left, which usually represents the zone you're working with, now represents how many days you wish to delay the schedule, anywhere from one to nine days. So if you find yourself in a situation which you have to use a battery operated controller, this is a fantastic little guy. And I wouldn't hesitate to recommend it to anyone. Questions? Chat with one of our incredible customer service agents on sprinklerwarehouse.com. They really know their stuff and they will get you squared away. Remember, Sprinkler Warehouse has everything for your irrigation needs, so your trees, lawn, flower beds, and gardens are lush and beautiful. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for helpful tips, tutorials, and general sprinkler instruction. For Sprinkler Warehouse, I'm Adrian Sanchez, your Sprinkler Warehouse Pro. Later, irrigator.